does God want you to worship or anybody to worship false gods? Statement was signed by Pope Francis that echoes what he had stated in the Abu Dhabi document that God wills the plurality of religions. And then that document, after he was signed it, was changed to remove that phrase, which is good. But, I mean, let's just take a moment here. If you're watching right now on YouTube, if you're listening, you'll just have to imagine in your mind if you're on Audible, iTunes, podcast. But if you're, if you're watching right now, look on the screen. Okay, this is Ganesh. This is elephant head god of Hinduism. Ganesh. This is the most ridiculous god ever created, false god, by humans. It's like a really, it's an overweight guy with an elephant head wearing makeup. All right, people worship Ganesh. And just to show the absurdity of all this, can we really honestly say to the people that worship Ganesh, which is an obese guy with an elephant head wearing makeup and has a crown on. Oh, and multiple arms. Is that right? Yeah, we got four arms on there. God wills this. God wants you to worship Ganesh. Because I have a different source. I pulled out some sources today. I got my Dewey, beautiful Dewey Rames Holy Bible. And... There's this thing called the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses. It's a it's distilling the basic morality in accordance with natural law. I wrote my PhD dissertation on Thomas Aquinas and natural law and the twofold end of beatitude, something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about, reading hundreds of books about, writing 600 pages about. And if you're saying something, if you say you're the Pope and then you teach something that's against one of the Ten Commandments or multiple Ten Commandments, that ain't good. That ain't right. So I'm just going to read you commandment number one from the Ten Commandments. And if you want to read the Ten Commandments in the Bible, you got to go to Exodus chapter 20. And the Lord spoke these words. I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Period. End quote. How is it that a bunch of religious leaders could get together, sign a statement saying that God wills the plurality of religions? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are up in heaven saying, man, you know, we will. Just as we will race and male, female, gender, for people to worship Bacchus or Ganesh, the elephant head God. We're all about that. We, we are all about the idea that people are trying to worship us and pray to us without the mediator, Jesus Christ, without baptism, without the Eucharist, without confirmation, without the priesthood instituted by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. How can you throw this out? So we're going to open up with our prayer. We'll pray the Our Father to the Father through Jesus Christ, the prayer Jesus gave us, not Ganesh, not the elephant head. And then we're going to look at what Francis signed and the controversy that is kicking up on it. So let us pray. Oremus. Nomini Patris et Fidi, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, Sanctificetur Nomen Tuum, Adveniat Regnum Tuum, Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cedo et in Terra. Panam Nostrum Quotidianum de Nobis Odie, Timite Nobis Debita Nostra, Sicut et nos dimittimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libra nos amalo. Amen. St. Pius X, pray for us. St. Moses, pray for us. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, I'm going to put my big Bible away. 
Dewey Rames, commandment number one, thou shalt have no strange gods before me. What that tells me, as a simple man living in Texas, what that tells me is God does not want me, you, anyone living in India, living in Dubai, living in China, worshiping Ganesh, worshiping the God of Muhammad, worshiping Pachamama. These are not the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All right, so what's going down? I'm going to take Ganesh off the screen because I just don't like looking at this demon. It's no good. All right, so there was a meeting in Kazakhstan, which is where Bishop Athanasius Schneider is uh, a bishop. And as you remember, there was quite the, hmm, I don't want to say controversy. It was more than a controversy. It was a, a claim that the Pope taught heresy. You see, back in 2019, and I covered it here and did uh, several podcasts on it, had guests, we discussed it. There was a document called the Document on Human Fraternity. This was in February 2019. It was in Abu Dhabi. And it had a controversial statement in it, which I will read. And it says, The pluralism and diversity... This is a document of, say, of Pope Francis. Quote, The pluralism and diversity of religions, color, sex, race, and language are willed by God in his wisdom through which he created human beings, end quote. So we're talking about creation here. We're talking about the wisdom of God, and we're talking about how beautiful and wise and prudential it was that God made, for example, humanity with male and female. God positively willed that. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't like he created uh, Adam and then like, oh, he somehow popped out Eve and like, well, that's cool. We'll allow that too. No, God made Eve from Adam, Genesis. It wasn't an accident. Same thing goes with uh, race, color. God willed it that some people like me would have blue eyes. Some people have green eyes. Some people have brown eyes. Some people have blonde hair. Some people have red hair to various different shades. There's all kinds of brown hair, black hair. As you get older, some people have gray hair. Sometimes little kids, they call them toeheads. It's almost white. God designed that. He thought that would be cool. Just like he makes different color flowers and he makes animals in different colors and different shades. He said, you know what? Humans who are made in my image... I'm also going to work into that situation different colors of skin, eye color, and hair. And that's beautiful. And that's good. But in this list of things that God willed in his wisdom is the diverse pluralism and diversity of religions. Which is the idea that Islam, rabbinical Talmudic Judaism, Hinduism, Worship of Pachamama, Greek God, Pantheon, Roman God, Pantheon, all that is kind of it's it's on par. It's in the same list as green eyes, blue eyes, redhead, blonde hair, brown hair, brown skin, black skin, pale white skin. And that right there is the H word. It is heretical. You cannot say that God willed for there to be a religion where people are in blindness and worshiping falsely, breaking the first commandment every time they worship, when they worship the elephant head Ganesh or Shiva. You can't say that. You can't teach that if you're a Catholic. There is one true Savior, Jesus Christ, who instituted one true church, 
the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, who instituted one true set of sacraments administered by one true priesthood for all time. He didn't, Jesus didn't institute Catholic and Lutheran or Catholic and Orthodox or Catholic and Methodist and Lutheran and Anglican. And he looks down, he's like, man, I'm just glad all my children are divided and have doctrinal confusion all over. That pleases me. No, he doesn't want that. He allows it because he allows us to have free will. Now, this was a controversy. Bishop Athanasius Schneider from Kazakhstan directly spoke to Francis on this point. And Francis said, well, that's the passive will of God. So there's the active will of God and the passive will of God. The active will of God is that he wants all humans to be saved. He wants no one to ever commit a sin. He wants every child to have two parents that love them. That's the active will of God. To keep the Ten Commandments, to be baptized, to love Jesus, etc. There's also what theologians call the passive will of God. This is what he allows because of human free will. And he allows certain things that are harmful somehow for the greater good. Like your house flooding. Like you getting a form of cancer. These kind of things are the hard parts of being a believer. These are the things that atheists point to and say, ah, your God is mean, your God is cruel, because he passively allows these things to happen. If he was a really nice father, he would always intervene and never let any of these bad things happen, but he does. So what Francis said to Bishop Athanasius Schneider is, well, although it says that God wills the plurality and diversity of religions, what, what that really meant was God passively allows it or wills it. The problem with that is, and we've gone over it again, and Bishop Athanasius Schneider brought it up, is that everything in the list, for example, God made sex, male, female, the male sex, the female sex, that was actively willed by God. It wasn't just like, well, I'm just going to allow women to exist. No, that's not how God, God wanted there to be male and female. That's how he created them. It wasn't passively, no, well, just, okay, I'll let that go like he would cancer cells or a flood or a tornado. So the way that the sentence is set up does not allow for how Pope Francis said, well, that's what it really meant passively. Let me read it to you again. The plural, pluralism and diversity of religions, plural religions, color, sex, race, and language are willed by God in his wisdom through which he created human beings. It's not the case. Here's a response from Bishop Athanasius Schneider. And this whole controversy, the recent one today, is interesting because all of this is happening in Kazakhstan, where Bishop Athanasius Schneider is. Here's Bishop Athanasius uh, Schneider in his response. And I'm very grateful because I think Bishop Athanasius Schneider is perhaps the holiest bishop I've ever met in person. And he also wrote the foreword to my best-selling book, Infiltration. So I, I'm forever grateful to Bishop Athanasius Schneider for that. Here's what he said, quote, According to the will of Christ, faith in him and his divine teaching must replace other religions. However, not by force, but by loving persuasion, as expressed in the hymn of Lodge for the Feast of Christ the King. Non ile regna claribus, non vi metuque subdidit, altu lavatus stipite, amore traxit omnia. Not with the sword, force and fear he subjects the nations, the peoples. But lifted up on the cross, he lovingly trucks it, draws, trucks it. It's like where we get the word tractor, tractor beam. He draws like a tractor beam, trucks it in Latin draws all things to himself. The way that Christ and the apostles converted so many people and the great missionaries like uh, St. Francis Xavier was not by sword like Muhammad, not by fear, 
but by going up on the cross and becoming a sacrifice. And Athanasius Schneider properly says that faith in him and his divine teaching must replace other religions. You see, if you are a Druid living in Ireland and St. Patrick comes to your town and y'all are worshiping all these totems and idols and gods and you're doing the wicker man thing, that's what they used to do. And he comes in and says, hey, God became man in the womb of a virgin. He lived a perfect sinful life. He died on a cross for your salvation. He rose on the third day. He instituted a church that you should join. And I'm going to tell you about his teaching and invite you to join the church. And they did. But they couldn't say, well, we also want to still be Druids. That's cool too, right? No, 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 no. In fact, many of these missionaries, especially in the medieval era, when they come to town and people convert, what do they do? They have them physically destroy their idols. And then often they either destroy their temples or shrines or they convert them with exorcisms and holy water and make them into churches. They drive out the demons and bring in Jesus. So there's a replacement that goes on. Bishop Athanasius Schneider is absolutely correct. So what does the text say? I've got to credit a guy that I see a lot of interesting good stuff on Twitter, and that is Nick Donnelly. So Nick Donnelly tweeted, I saw this on Twitter, the change in the, the original text and the change in the text. So here it is. Nick Donnelly says, Pontifex, Pope Francis, please, can you explain? Oh, before I begin, please like the show, thumbs up, share this podcast on Facebook and Twitter by using the share button. And if you're new, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and the notification. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Please, can you explain why changes were made to point 10 in the final declaration? This is in Kazakhstan. There is a significant difference between the text of point 10 read out by the Congress by Dr. Joe Bailey Wells and that published on the Congress's website. This is the original version read by Joanne Bailey Wells, an Anglican leader of Dorking, England. Quote, We note that pluralism and differences of religion, skin color, gender, race, and language are expressions of the wisdom of God's will and our creation. Thus, any incidence of coercion to the particular religion and religious doctrine is unacceptable. And add a little finger wave on that one. Okay, so uh, Nick Donnelly's getting that from the live broadcast yesterday by EWTN. Here is the version that was posted on the website at the Congress website. Quote, we note that pluralism in terms of differences in skin color, gender, race, language, and culture are expressions of the wisdom of God and creation. Religious diversity is permitted by God, and therefore any coercion to a particular religion and religious doctrine is unacceptable. So you can see the differences right there on the screen. The first one says, we note that pluralism and differences of religion, dot, 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 are expressions of the wisdom of God. The new version takes out religion from the list. It's almost like Bishop Athanasius Schneider got in there with some whiteout and just sort of painted that over, got rid of it, and then adds in on the end, religious diversity is permitted by God. And you know what? I would agree to that. Permitted as in allows it in free will, not as in gives you a permit so you have a right to do it. No one has a right to worship Zeus or Bacchus. No one has a right to preach the Quran and say, this is the will of God, because it's not the will of God. Error has no rights. It can be tolerated. It should say religious religions can be tolerated in society. Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to say I don't agree with that. Religious diversity is permitted. It says by God. 
I don't know. Permitted. Permitted can be like, I give you permission. And I don't think God. It, permitted could be allowed. In that case, it could make sense. But permitted as in permission. God does not give you permission to get down on your hands and knees and worship elephant head Ganesh. Please. Ganesh, please. I mean, there's people in India, they have floats, they all get down, they worship. There was even a Catholic church where they processed Ganesh into the church as an ecumenical gesture. H to the no. H to the no. So the question is, by Ganesh, false god, demon. The question is, why was this changed last minute? And I think it was changed the last minute because Pope Francis and his advisors and his handlers said, what row? This is the Abu Dhabi controversy again. Everybody was up on our case. Let's change it. So what was read in public and signed is different than what was put on the website. According to Nick Donnelly. Now, before I talked about this, I was like, I got to make sure this is legit. It's not just Nick saying it. So I did a search and guess what? I went over to LifeSite News and there was an article put up today by Michael Haynes. He also goes through it and here's what he says. In a particular turn of events, this is Michael Haynes on LifeSite News. The name of the article is Document saying God wills differences in religion was quietly changed just hours after Pope signed it. So he's confirming that Pope, the Pope signed it before it was changed, which is heretical. Michael Haynes says, in a particular turn of events, the ecumenical declaration read out and signed by Pope Francis at the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions held in Kazakhstan has since been changed. The original version appeared to go against Catholic teaching, and it is not known if Pope Francis agreed to the updated version. The original version of the declaration was read aloud by Anglican prelate, Dr. Joe Bailey Wells in front of assembled leaders of the Congress. Can I just pause here? Why the heck is the Pope of the Catholic Church at a Congress of Leaders of Traditional Religions? What? Why Why? Why is he there? I wouldn't go to that. Okay, like, hey, Taylor Marshall, free ticket. Come out to uh, the Congress of World Religions and Traditional. I'm not going to that. I don't believe in that. I mean, I believe in traditional religion, singular as in traditional Catholicism. Oh, incidentally, uh, Lawrence England had uh, this on Twitter. Okay, which wise guy added quote marks to Pope Francis's name display? And you can see they put quotes around Pope. Pope quotes around it, Francis. And I was like, well, maybe that was just the styling on the name card. So then I went and looked elsewhere. And then I found this picture of the guy next to him. He doesn't have quotes. He just David. But Pope Francis, I guess, is an ecumenical meeting. And they don't believe in the Pope. So they put his title in Pope quotes. Interesting catch there by Lawrence England. Props to him. So Michael Haynes at Lifetime is saying that Francis, that not only was the change made, as Nicholas says, but that Francis signed it in the heretical original version, and then later it was published different. So what is really going down here? It's no good. It's no good to have a man who's the vic who says I'm the vicar of Christ and every cardinal in the Catholic Church right now says Francis is the vicar of Christ. Whether you're a sede vacantist or you think Pope Benedict XVI is the real pope, every valid legit cardinal of the Church of Rome of the Catholic Church in the Apostolic See says Pope Francis is the pope. And he issues documents and he wears the white zucchetto and the white cassock. And he is signing statements that say, and I quote, 
We note that pluralism and differences of religion are expressions of the wisdom of God. How does that fit with the first commandment of the Ten Commandments? I need a savvy Jesuit. I mean, I need a Jesuit who's got like three PhDs to take me by, well, not take me by the hand, to walk beside me and, and accompany me and explain to my dull, dense, Texas brain how it is that God can, can will in his wisdom. Remember, wisdom is another word for Jesus Christ in the Bible. How God in his wisdom can will the diversity of religions and the Ten Commandments be true. You shall have no strange gods before me. I just need the smartest slick. I mean, I might need James Martin SJ. I might need James Martin to come on this podcast and explain to just stupid podunk Texas Marshall how it is that God in his wisdom can will all these religions and Ganesh and Islam and Talmudic Judaism, indigenous Pachamama, all that, and say, have no other gods before me, no strange gods, and no idols of those gods, like Elephant Head Ganesh. I mean, am I just dumb? Am I a stupid guy? For those of you watching in the live chat right now, am I dumb? What am I missing? When I became a Catholic, I believed... And I still do believe that there's only one Savior, there's one God, one Savior, one true religion, one true church, one true set of sacraments. And that God wants everyone to accept that package deal. Was I dumb? Did I mess up somewhere? Along the way, was God just upstairs winking and saying, Ganesh is kind of dope. I like Ganesh. It's kind of funny. And I allow it. Like there's people out there worshiping a fat guy with the elephant head on with four hands. That's kind of cool. You know, like, haha. Wait, is that the Holy Trinity is, is in his wisdom? Gives everybody permission for that? Am I dumb? How come I cannot put this round peg and jam it into this square hole of ecumenism of nostra etate do y'all know any slick jesuits who could help me out to understand that the jesuit theology of pope francis is the same as moses that no strange gods means Yes, get with a group of other people at a Congress of religious leaders and take photos and sign documents together when all these people represent different religions, different faiths, different gods, different rituals, different liturgies. Am I just stupid? Jerusalem Gem says, not dumb, just funny looking. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe I'm dumb and funny looking. I just don't know. Peter says, Elephant Man. Yes, it's Elephant Man. There's no way Jesus Christ who died on the cross thinks Elephant Head Ganesh is legit. There's just zero. Zero possibility on that. Zero. People are saying, nope. No, no, you're not a heretic. All right, well, that's it. Well, let's say a, uh, let's pray a Hail Mary. Uh, it bothers me. I don't see how you could say, I'm the vicar of the Christ with the keys of the kingdom of heaven and then go out and teach this. I don't get it. I don't get it. And again, once again, 
I call on the cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church to initiate the process of St. Robert Bellarmine as expressed in his book, De Ecclesia. Whenever you have a pope who is under suspicion of tyranny or heresy, you call together, well, first you do two admonitions, and then you call together a tribunal. This needs to happen. All right, we're going to pray Hail Mary. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, ad benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostre. Amen. St. Robert Bellarmine, pray for us. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. All right, thanks for watching today, and make sure you like, subscribe, share this video. You are my algorithm. People watch these videos, why? Because YouTube promotes them? No. People watch these videos because you, the viewers, hit the share button, and you say, hey, check out Taylor Marshall's latest podcast. Here's the link. Boom. You hit the share button. It's really easy to do. It takes you two to four seconds to do it. And if you're new, please join our 390,000 subscribers on this channel and growing. Let's get those numbers to 400,000 and 500,000. And who knows where we'll go from there. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, and um, there'll be more great content coming. And of course, make sure you're praying your rosary every single day. If you don't pray the rosary, you're not on don't pay the rosary every day. You're not on the team. Until next time, remember our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.